Good morning, everybody. This is EJ back again uh, for uh, another video for today. So yeah, two for one today. Whoa. Yeah, so awesome. But anyways, before I talk about anything else, I figured that I should just get right to talking about what is going on in the screen because there's a lot of stuff that's going to happen in like the first 10 minutes. So what is going on in Creative right now is me sketching out a hover bike. Um, more about that later. I do love my hover bikes, <laughs> just as a simple statement. Um, and basically the prompt for this particular illustration is sand drift. So uh, my idea is basically to have all this flowy sand, you know, flying around because this hover bike is flying through it basically. So that's what you saw me put down at the very bottom is this sand. And of course, uh, the sand that got blown up because of the exhaust fumes of the hover bike is all flying around behind the guy. And it looks like he's racing, you know, like pod racing, like in Star Wars kind of deal. So yeah. So basically what I did after I did the sketch is I put down the ground, uh, the colors for the ground, and then I put the colors for all the sand that's flying around. And of course there's colors for the hover bike racer dude guy. And then as soon as I lay down all the colors, I smudge things around, which is what I typically do, you know, kind of get some blending in, in between some of my colors. And then of course, as soon as I have this all nicely blended, I am going to slowly start my detailing phase, which is, you know, basically just delineate my edges, make my edges sharper. I add highlights, which you just saw me just do just now. I added a few highlights on the hover bike. Uh, so it looks like it's kind of catching highlights from the light source. Um, or reflecting the light from the light source. Um, so I added highlights and of course I accentuate the shadows, which is basically just making the shadows darker and deeper um, if it's needed. Um, but um, as for this painting itself, um, this is pretty much almost done, which is really odd. I just now realized that this was an old technique that I used to do. I used to start out small and then I blow things up. And, and then as soon as I blow things up, I would start sharpening things uh, some more, which is what I'm doing right now. I'm making things even sharper. Um, so yeah, my detailing phase uh, became a two-step process instead of a one-step process on this one. Um, but yeah, uh, it's fairly effective though. You know, it kind of gets me what I needed to get done or uh, I get to accomplish what I needed to get done uh, based on this old technique. Um, it's actually a really good technique too uh, as a piece of advice for any artist who has over detailing issues, which I did at some point. Um, basically you just start out small and it prevents you from doing too many details. Um, when you needed to focus on like the basics of the image, in which case that's what I did in uh, the first half of it. I just focus on the basics of the image. And as soon as I have the basics of the image down, then obviously I added more details. So yeah, delineating some more, making my edges sharper. I'm about to work on the helmet. You'll see me make it sharper. So yeah. Now, after this speed paint, um, basically I'm gonna jump into Blender. I'm gonna, well, not really jump into Blender. I'm gonna open up Blender and do some more work there, which we'll talk about in the next, uh, few minutes. It should be now because I remember, um, making a mental note of it. There it is. Okay. Hi. Hello. Blender. What's up? <laughs> there you are. Okay. Now I'm going to talk about what's going on in Blender. So in Blender, I basically redoing the whole scene in 3D. And again, I'll explain this some more later. Uh, I really just want to just talk about what I'm, what is going on in the screen right now. So it makes a lot more sense. Um, but basically when 
I do 3D for my illustrations, I really just simply use it for basic uh, lighting and shapes and perspective uh, issues, or not perspective issues, but um, I do 3D blocking to help me with perspective and lighting. Uh, it basically just speeds up my drawing process and instead of me having to figure out what the angle of something is, drawing out my vanishing points and all that stuff. A lot of that stuff I could skip um, if I have a 3D basis for my illustration, which is what this is going to be. Um, not only that, but the other problematic thing that is actually just really problematic for everyone else too is lighting. Lighting is just so difficult. You can be a master artist and still have issues with lighting because lighting is just so immensely unpredictable um, in so many different situations. Um, so really, that's another good thing to having like a 3D render as part of your illustration process, just so that you get the lighting down and perspective down and all that good stuff. So this is basically what I'm doing. I'm basically remaking the illustration again. Um, but in order for me to remake that illustration, I needed a 3D render to base my re illustration from which is what this is so now that i've explained that father um what is going on in the screen right now are just basic shapes of what i need things to be in this case i'm making the basic shape for the hover bike racer so now that i finished the basic shape for the hover bike rider i am doing well, first I started out with the basic shape of the bike and then I realized that the bike was too small. So now I'm adding some more shapes to it. And really there's no logic behind this. I mean, I didn't have a vision in my head. I was seriously just going by with what I'm seeing on screen. So literally I'm just, you know, putting some stuff down, seeing if I like it. And if I don't like it, then I'm going to do something else. And this is basically just what is going on. I'm like, well, I don't like that shape. So I'm going to add this shape. And then I'm like, oh, look, it, it needs a footrest. So I'm going to do the footrest shape, which I'm going to talk about the footrest later on too. Oh man, the footrest cracks me up. But yeah, so all of this is what um, is going on in the screen right now. And then after I lay out all my basic shapes, what's gonna end up happening is that I'm gonna end up coloring my 3D objects with just some simple color schemes just to have, just so that I have some color. Uh, the color choice is random. I didn't have like a specific color palette in my mind when I started this 3D um mock up um and then obviously i'm going to duplicate the rider because he's obviously racing against someone else so there's going to be two of them in the scene so everything that i just made i'm just going to duplicate again and then of course i'm going to change the colors on that guy and then the part that did not get recorded in this whole process is the sand all the flying sand i actually built a 3d object for a stand-in for the sand, and that did, that part didn't get recorded um i canceled recording way too early so yeah but now that i've talked about the process and explained what is going on we can go rewind back just a little bit and then now talk about what the idea and how this illustration got started and all that good stuff so okay <laughs> all right so how this illustration got started in the first place is from a prompt from daily spit paint group in facebook i'm a member of it i try to practice daily spit paints it's a good art practice it's a great way to warm up and it's a good way to flex your art muscles so it's been a habit of mine right um anyways for that particular day which right now i'm obviously working on this last year in 10 16 2019 i always put dates in my file names just so that i could order them out um 
not alphabetically but chronologically that's how everything is ordered in my folders basically and that's why i have dates but it's also a great way for me to remember when something got made so like right now i'm looking up on the title bar of blender and it says 2010 or 2010 2019 10 16 sand drift version 2 so that's when i was like basically created this piece anyways So sometime in October last year, I decided to develop the um, uh, speed paint some more, which is what we saw the first five minutes. The first five minutes was just me doing the speed paint. And the thing with the daily speed paint group is that every illustration just needs to be 30 minutes max. That's it. That's all you get for doing an illustration. So that first five minutes was just done in literally in um 30 minutes and then i really liked the illustration i was like okay well i think i'm gonna try and develop it some more um and that's the reason why i decided that you know i was gonna do another speed paint version of it like a much longer speed paint um in this case aside from this one hour that i spent i think i spent about an hour on blender i actually okay that doesn't include rendering when i say an hour worth of work uh that does not include rendering rendering obviously takes a lot more <laughs> time um but in this case i actually think i might have spent a little more than an hour so maybe i spent like an hour and a half doing all these basic shapes adding all these colors and all that stuff um maybe an hour i, I could not for the life of me remember how long i actually spent on this but I definitely know that it's definitely no more than two hours. So anyways, aside from the hour, an hour and a half that I spent on Blender, um, the amount of work that I did on the next version of the speed paint is I think about two and a half hours or so. Uh, at the very beginning of every single one of my videos, I always post like how long it takes me to do any kind of project and in an event of in the case of this project, everything was done in total um, in about four hours, I think, was what I wrote down. Um, but yeah, so anyway, so 30 minutes, you know, just to do the speed paint. I like the speed paint. I was like, okay, well, you know, I'm going to try and develop this into another speed paint just to see, like, what I can do. Um, and then... Um, I did the blender obviously just to help me with the scene and then of course I did my two and a half hour illustration now if I wanted to further refine this um, basically like I would take that two and a half hour speed paint and develop it some more into a, like a full-blown illustrations and my full-blown illustrations are like 10 hour plus uh, with the majority of them being around the 30 hours um, which some people are going to be like, well, why are you doing a 30 hour painting if you already have a two hour painting? And my reply to them is that it's going to look so much better. Um, I think that's like what most people don't get with art is, you know, even though I have two finished projects or two finished images at the end of this video in less than five hours, they sit there and think that's it, that the art is done. Like it doesn't need to be redone. It doesn't need to be, you know, redeveloped and whatnot. And most people don't realize that the really, truly good artworks, the one that's like uber detail, uber fancy, it's a lot of work. <laughs> so yeah, having to explain this to clients can be a tad bit frustrating because <laughs> every single client wants everything done now and cheaply and if they find out that something that's gonna look uber good is gonna take 30 hours they're like great i'm gonna pay you 30 hours worth of work instead of five so anyways i'm sorry about that rant <laughs> i didn't mean to go on that rant um my point in saying all that is that really good art really does take some time so 
Um, that's the reason why I do my speed paints, just to get me a great idea of what my full-blown illustrations would look like. And then my full-blown illustrations I work on for months at a time, you know, an hour here, an hour there, you know, just to develop some pieces and just to keep my artistic muscles strong and sturdy. So, yeah. Um, anyways, enough about that tidbit. Um, right now obviously we just finished with blender and now i have my render and now that i have my render my 3d render i basically put it back into krita just so that i could develop it some more in krita and again my process for the second speed paint for the second time I'm really developing doing this speed paint is basically just the same as what we saw in the first speed paint you know except obviously I'm adding a little a little bit more details than the first one so in this case uh, a lot of things have changed too obviously because in the first speed paint you know the angle was like a the perspective and the angle of the camera was just like front facing, you know, it would just look at the rider from the front. Well, with this one, you know, I'm kind of added a little bit more dynamic uh, postures to it. Obviously, it's a side view of the hover bike this time. It's not, you know, looking at it from the front. So it adds a little bit more um action oriented feeling into the illustration instead of it just being so boring and blah like it was at the very beginning so um so yeah that is obviously i have that going for my for the second version of this illustration um and then aside from obviously the changes that i did with the poses of the bikes and whatnot i obviously the colors are obviously changed and again like i said i didn't have a starting palette in my mind uh, actually you know what i think i did maybe i wanted pink to actually be like ahead of the green or something um i didn't know why i was thinking that but in the end the pink ended up turning into like deep purple slight slash bluish color because i realized that the pink ended up disappearing too much into the sand so I was like, well, I need to change that and just change it into a purple color just so that it sounds out better. Um, but yeah, um, so basically now that um, I have that 3D render and like, you know, I have all the different poses and whatnot, I basically just sketch everything out. It's all repeat and repeating the process from the very beginning where I sketch my basic scene out really quickly i don't need like a good line sketch in the, in this case um and then i colored it uh very very quickly but i knew that i was going to depend on a lot of the colors that i already got from blender anyways and then as soon as i got as soon as i quickly color it you know i put it like at half transparency so some of the colors from the blender render would show up and then i merged them all in one layer together with my good line sketch and then I blend everything just so that I could have this blended base paint for me to base uh, my illustration on and so that's what you'll see me be doing in the next few minutes just kind of blending things around just so I could start my detailing process <laughs>
so as you can see on the screen right now I'm redoing an outline sketch on top of my painting and I do this frequently throughout my painting process um, sometimes when I blend things the details in my head gets lost you know at first I recognize some details or I see some potential for details in some of the blended shapes uh, but sometimes the blended shapes gets way too confusing at times that I feel the need to you know just do a good nice clean sketch on top of it just to kind of help me figure where things are where things are um, the great example of that is the body of the hover bike racer um, the initial shape of it was way too big was way too huge and so I decided you know what I'm I'm gonna make him less wide it, it wasn't that he was like fat or big or anything it wasn't that he was just wide <laughs> like almost impossibly too wide so I have to skinny him up a little bit if that's even a word <laughs> skinny him up a little bit okay um, so yeah and then obviously hover bikes don't exist in real life so obviously they're immensely hard to kind of figure out like how they would look like uh, one of the things that I have issues with with this illustration is where to put the guy's foot <laughs> I for the life of me I, I don't know what the footrest would look like um, simply because I just don't think that it looked like it was going to be aerodynamic um, like the way this hover bike is as is it just felt like his footrest was just sticking at the bottom and so if this was an actual flying object in real life it just it just didn't feel aerodynamic so I was like struggling with that design I'm like where am I gonna foot his foot <laughs> I just remember thinking that um, but eventually I just went ahead and just added this thing that kind of juts out at the bottom and I was like well forget aerodynamic then <laughs> let's just not make it aerodynamic as much as I think it could be but yeah anyways um, design wise it does work I mean it looks logically possible and feasible that that footrest would be on that spot where it is you know so um, aside from that design issue I didn't really have that much design issues aside from the decals um, on the actual motorbike I always have problems with decals because I, I didn't know like how to paint them because it's like basically a painted scene a painted thing on top of another painting so it always kind of just confuses me at times you know any kind of anything that has decals on it uh whether it be the guy's outfit the guy's uniform has decals obviously or any other kind of like racing machines such as you know your just regular f1 car or whatnot i mean putting decals on it would kind of be difficult in my head because I'm always thinking in terms of lighting like I feel like I have to paint the thing the decal as if it was being affected by the light in the scene which technically it is you know but yeah anyways aside from that little problem that I have um everything worked out great you know um I love the colors in this one I never really there's another painting that I did right around this season where I use purple and oranges together. Like I don't consciously think of putting purple and oranges. They just never crossed my mind. But amazingly enough, purple and orange makes such a great color combo, which is the case in this one. Um, this purple uh, racer that was pink turned into purple slash bluish and. You know it works great with the orange I know blue always works great with orange I mean that's like a motif in a lot of movies they do blue lighting with orange lighting a lot um, so I've always known that blue and orange works well but as for purple and orange I'm kind of surprised that it works surprisingly well too 
um, again, like I said, I did another painting with those color schemes and I was like, wow, that turned out to be great. So yeah. But anyways, this illustration is almost done. This second version speed paint, much longer speed paint, is almost done. So again, like I said, the first one was 30 minutes, not a whole lot of time. 30 minutes speed paints are just painful for me, honestly. Um, but two hours, three hours, I'm really okay with. You know, I could pack the amount of details that I wanted and, you know, still make the piece look semi-good, semi, semi, -good, semi decent. So yeah. But anyways, this is my second painting, third painting, no, actually fourth painting, fourth timeless, timeless video for this month of December. Uh, as I had mentioned in an earlier video, I'm adding two more uh, for my December video list just to kind of celebrate the month of December because it's Christmas. <laughs> it also is the month that I started regularly posting videos. So yeah, um, Merry Christmas everyone. I hope you guys are having a blast this wonderful holiday season. Um, this, sh this will be my last video. So uh, yeah, I will just be seeing you guys next year with another video, uh, Tom last video with narration because you know me i like <laughs> rambling <laughs> oh yeah i do love my rambles but yeah but yeah have um looking at the scene yeah it's almost done uh i couldn't really remember what else i did um aside from the minor details oh i remember um i also like fine tune like all the decals um uh, and then I think I did something else like on the on top of the not on top but like in the front of the hover bike. Um another thing I neglected to mention is black silver 52. Um I did a speed paint for daily speed paint group uh that I posted last year too. It's like another speed paint prompt. The speed paint prompt for that one was black silver, and somehow I ended up doing another hover bike. Um and so I figured, hey, I'll revisit Black Silver 52 <laughs> and yeah, make another speed paint of this mythical racer. <laughs> that, so yeah, but that's what is written on his bike is Black Silver 52, just to kind of denote this, this racer that has been a motif in some of my paintings as of late. Man, what is it with hover bikes and me? This is the third hover bike speed painting I've done that I've put out on YouTube. So yeah, I don't know what my fascination is. They're cool though. They're a cool concept. I mean, if they exist in real life, honestly, it would be cool to have one. So yeah. That's it. This illustration is done. Once again, thank you guys for watching it with me. Merry Christmas. Happy Holidays. I will see you guys next year. Good night.